you believe in life after death? If so, what comes next? Heaven? Hell? Nothing? Or maybe, possibly, reincarnation? For centuries, people have debated the possibility of reincarnation. And thanks to the free flow of information on the internet these days, many are becoming more certain that reincarnation is indeed a possibility. On this three-part episode of Cold Truth, Dark Reality, I want to present a number of well-documented, alleged reincarnation cases and leave the decision up to you. So be sure and comment your thoughts on the subject below. Mid-morning in the spring of 1957, six-year-old Jacqueline Pollock and her nine-year-old neighbor Anthony were walking with her 11-year-old sister Joanna on their way to Sunday school in Hexham, England. They were always excited for church get-togethers, to see other children and socialize, make art projects, and sing and hear Bible stories. Sadly, this morning would quickly come to a tragic end as a distraught local woman heavily under the influence of alcohol and narcotics saw the three children walking along the side of the road. The woman had recently had her own children removed from her custody by authorities after being evaluated and deemed as an unfit parent through a local psychiatric hospital and unfortunately released before treatment was completed. The woman would later claim that that morning when she saw the three happy children walking on the side of the road, that in her mind she could only see her own children and the life that they would have separated from their mother, and in that moment all she felt was emptiness and complete sadness as she drove her vehicle at full speed into the unsuspecting Pollock twins and their neighbor friend Anthony. Instantly the two girls were killed and young Anthony later died on the way to the hospital. The case was horrific and deeply scarring to the town of Hexham and quickly headlines of the tragedy spread across England as people read of the event that unfolded that morning in May. Deeply troubling as this account was to the public and as devastating to the girl's parents, John and Florence Pollock, things were about to take an even stranger turn in the coming months and years. Florence and her husband would eventually seek to move on from the unthinkable tragedy and about a year later gave birth to twin girls Gillian and Jennifer on October 4th in 1958. It was said that right up until birth, John had predicted his wife Florence would have twins. Some claimed that this caused much turmoil in the couple's marriage due to the fact that they had just lost their daughters and Florence found this talk distasteful and unsettling. When asked, the family doctor overseeing the pregnancy claimed that there was no question in the fact that Florence was most certainly not pregnant with twins right up until two healthy baby girls were born. The two girls were identical and nearly impossible to tell apart except for both having circumstantially strange birthmarks. Jennifer had a birthmark on her left hip identical in size and shape to the birthmark on the left hip of her deceased sister Jacqueline. Stranger still, she also had a birthmark on her forehead, which was very similar to a scar Jacqueline had had in the same spot before she died. The twins were still very young when the parents moved to a new town called Whitley Bay, nearly an hour away from Hexham. The family decided it best to just start fresh in a new town and move away from the bad memories hanging over the previous location, and look forward to a bright future with their two new twin girls, and simply not speak of the past or the town of Hexham ever again. As time wore on, the girls became old enough to talk and strangely began to recall memories of Hexham and details of the town that were seemingly impossible for them to know. Since they had not grown up there, nor had their mother or father spoken of the town, it seemed strange to everyone that the girls would speak of places they had never been and describe in detail the town of Hexham, including several landmarks, as well as the local school, and even name some people that they had never even met. Their mother was at a complete loss as to what was happening, and being deeply religious, these accounts were very disturbing, and she tried to keep this talk to a minimum. Finally, with the twins at the age of four, John talked his wife into allowing the family a trip back to Hexham to see how the twins would react. Upon arrival, the girls seemed completely at home, as if they had known the place forever. They named locations and guided the bewildered mother and father to places the twins had never even set eyes on and some they hadn't heard of. They knew exactly where to find the local school and knew every inch of the local playground and park. While visiting relatives in the area, a long stored away chest of the deceased sister's toys were presented to the twins and upon opening it, they immediately recognized the toys and began to name several of the dolls with the exact names the deceased sisters Jacqueline and Johanna had given them, even naming which of the sisters owned each doll. All of this was completely to the bewilderment and dismay of the devout Catholic mother who did not accept initially that this could possibly be a case of reincarnation, even after the husband and other family members began to suggest the idea. That was, of course, until things began taking even stranger turns. 
After returning to the old hometown, toys owned by the deceased sisters that were not kept after the incident and the twins had never seen nor been made aware of began being requested by the two girls. When questioned, they would describe them in perfect detail upon request. They had began to remember these toys as their own and even knew which ones were bought for birthdays and which ones Santa brought them for Christmas. Over time, the twins began to take on personalities identical to that of their deceased sisters, wanting their hair done in similar fashion, talking the same, reacting the same, even carrying themselves the same. Joanna had actually been very protective of her younger sister, Jacqueline, and in the case of the twins, Jillian began to take on a more mature way of doing things and would often become very protective and watchful of her sister, Jennifer, who was born just 10 minutes after herself. Somehow, the twins even began playing the same games and began to request the same foods that the deceased older sisters had preferred. Even with all this evidence, however, Florence still had trouble accepting the idea of reincarnation until one day she overheard the girls talking with one another about their accident. The girls were recounting in graphic detail with one another how they had been hit by a car and witnessed each other bleeding out. Jillian, cradling her sister Jennifer in her arms, reached out and touched her sister's head, stating, I saw blood coming from your eyes. That's where the car hit you. The girls were completely unaware that their mother had just witnessed this moment, and a completely stunned Florence just sat in silence, aghast. On another occasion, Jillian pointed to her sister Jennifer's forehead at her birthmark and told her, that's the mark Jennifer got when she fell on a bucket. This too was something the twins could never have known as it was never discussed between the couple. Even still, the girls also showed a deep fear of automobiles and awoke often screaming from nightmares of being hit by a car and calling for one another frantically. When a car would rev up its engine outside, the girls would burst into tears and scream that the car wanted to kill them. Not long after the girls' fifth birthdays, the memories of their deceased sister's accident seemed to begin to fade. Though they would still recollect certain memories throughout their childhood, sometimes it would be food they never ate or belongings their long deceased sisters had owned. They could even perfectly describe the property and layout of the old house along with the decorations therein despite never having set foot in the home in question. The girls eventually stopped talking of the past as they went on to live their own lives and the memories faded almost completely. Many people dispute the memories of the Pollock twins as the false hopes of the devastated parents facing the unthinkable, and yet many defend the accounts as well. The parents stated many times as well as those who knew them that the girls were never influenced in any way and even discouraged and punished in many cases by the devout Catholic mother who for the most part did not want to accept this possibility due to the conflicting nature of her personal faith, though she would eventually warm to the idea. As strange as the case of the Pollock Twins is, this is only the first segment in a three-part series I'm doing on documented cases of the possibility of reincarnation. Each one will become progressively more strange as I go through the list I've prepared, so be sure and leave a like and comment your thoughts below, and don't forget to subscribe for the next video. See you soon.